Okay, well, thank you very much, you guys, for coming in here and talking for a little while after getting uh, all the photos and all the media stuff and all the things that are happening today before the Grand Slam, so I appreciate it. One thing I want to talk about, Anna, you first, is uh, you're really trying to do something this year with the Olympic Games. Uh, Annette Norberg won uh, back-to-back gold medals uh, in the same discipline. Caitlin Law has won two in two different disciplines. That's it. So uh, I'd love to hear from behind your eyes uh, the opportunity to try to win back-to-back gold medals. Yes, so uh, we're definitely trying to do that, but uh, it's been a long journey coming here. It's no like, I don't want to talk about COVID because we're obviously so sick and tired of hearing it, but I feel that it puts us in a position where uh, we need to pack our backpacks uh, the best way we can and uh, prepare us. And we definitely uh, like h- had... Uh, another way of thinking before COVID where we would be at this point. But we actually think that there's so many things that we still need to work on this year. Uh, So right now we're very focused to just learn from every game and every single chance we have out uh, on great ice and arenas. And um, yes, so... Olympic Games, even though it's very close, uh, we're staying in the now and in the moment and being very present right here, right now, and just focus on getting better for every shot, every game. And uh, when we get to Olympics, we feel hopeful uh, that the backpack will be packed and uh, we're ready to go and uh, play our best and see how how far that takes us. But we know we we can win it, so we definitely are there to make do our very best. Yeah, so I guess let's uh, maybe expand on that a little bit, um, especially going into, not so much now, because you're right, it's a little ways away, but end of December and, and through January, and I guess your training regimen, um, what you're going to do training-wise versus on ice, um, obviously you would have a, a plan of how to peak at the exact right time. Yes, of course we have a plan. We're a team with a plan. <laughs> so uh, then... <laughs> I would love to know a little bit more than that as far as your plan. But yes, more but timing. No, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you. So, <laughs> But uh, I think the most important thing is that we have had so many great eye sessions with training-wise. Uh, for So I think what most important is to compete ourselves into shape. So uh, compete at the Grand Slam here. Uh, it's a big part of becoming that team we want to be in February. So uh, in December and uh, January uh, leading up, our last tournament before Olympics will be here at the Grand Slam. Uh, so very excited by, about that. And then also December will be an important month uh, for us to get in physical shape because there will be a lot of games and a big time difference. So December focusing on the being in good shape physically and in January just uh, peak and get better. So in, in Inside Curling, we get a lot of messages from young athletes wondering what is the top players, and you being arguably the strongest sweeper in the game, um, <laughs> what does your training regimen look like, your training schedule to be a top front-end player? Because um, Anna just said how trying it is, how many games in a row in one week. And at the end, you've got to be just as strong as the start. So what what does that look like for you, Agnes? Yeah, exactly. Uh, now at this point, when we are full time curlers, uh, we have the opportunity to to be able to to like put up the perfect schedule with a lot of curling practices and a lot of physical training. Um, I would say like a week at home when I'm going away, like the next couple of weeks for for curling. Uh, then I would um, go like four sessions with strength in the gym. And then do like three interval sessions with like conditioning training, uh, and also like five or six sessions on ice. That's like in, a normal in one, week. in one week. Yes, yes, in one week. Okay, so hang so on. So that let's, is a normal week. <laughs> time, time, time. Okay, okay, that's wild. So okay, Monday morning. Yes. Monday morning, you get up. I get up. How's it work? And I leave my wild. I leave my kid at school, okay. and then I go to the rink with Anna. And we are like one and a half hours on ice. And I should also mention we're making our own ice. Yes. So we're making the ice and we take a lot of time on doing that because we want to uh, like make good conditions with uh, uh, to train, train on. Uh, so we make our own ice and we practice for like an hour and a half. And then we have lunch and then we go to our like gym facility where we do our intervals. And then we uh, just have like a snack and then we do the uh, strength training after. And then we're done at like four. 
and I go and pick my kid up. Right. <laughs> so that's the day. Yeah. So it's like a, 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 a yeah, like an eight to five work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's why you become the one of, or arguably the best sweeper in the game. Okay, that makes sense to me. So I, I would like to talk to you a little bit more because Karik brought up a good point um, about your sweeping. And he doesn't, I, I don't want to get out of school too far here, but he feels that in the women's game, carving isn't uh, a, a great factor other than he named a couple of names, but you first with Agnes. Uh, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on, in the female game, carving, uh, and the benefits of such, if you'd indeed yeah. do it, if Kark's actually telling me something that's right. So we've been talking a lot about this in our team and been trying, like, testing a lot. Uh, and uh, obviously, like, I have a little bit more weight than Sofia has. Like, Sofia, she's so good at getting, like, a lot of friction. Uh, but I'm I'm good at, like, putting a lot of my weight on the broom. Uh, so if you believe in the carving, uh, then that would... Uh, being like making scratches in the ice and obviously if you can put a more put more kilos on the broom uh, then you're going to make more scratches uh, so i guess that is what's carix uh, mm -hmm. talking about yes yeah, so okay let's let's go one step further i love that um so do you switch sides are you do you to be able to carve do you go side side so you can do it both ways or does anna maybe skip a game so that the come around is the same side all the time <laughs> we basically That's not, not, not a ridiculous question like, no not no, at no, all it's, it's a good question and Sophia she's like tiny and super light but she also has a great technique like we, we've been testing a lot and she she has an ability to put a lot of percentage of her own weight on the broom and with a good technique so she she she's really effective uh, so it's uh, her sweeping is uh, very good as well uh, so we're not like we're not changing anything that I'm going closest to the to the rock uh, we're we're doing it equally still and Sofia has to be mentioned here because uh, she has, like, she's a small person, but she's uh, above 75% of her body weight uh, on a broom. For, uh, well, what does like, that mean? So Anna? she can put 75% uh, of her body weight of her into total. of her total to the to the broom, like to the so, push of the, to the push right. of the broom. Right. So the push out. So I would see like that is like a very high number. So it's so almost it, no weight is on her feet. Exactly. So it's almost like the only thing that's hol holding her, her up is 25%. <laughs> so that's incredible core. What would, yeah, what, it is. How like, is it even possible? <laughs> it's incredible core and like uh, and just a, I I think it's like the timing of of everything like being able to to put a lot of weight on top of the broom and still um and still being able to like move your feet in the in the right pace as well as as well as you're sweeping. So we talked this is very important. We talked on the podcast when you came on um and you threw Agnes under the bus a bit <laughs> because this is years ago when you guys were kids. But Anna, done, said, Anna? Anna said that it was your idea to bring the pizza into the hot tub. It uh, might have been my idea to, like, order it to the backyard. <laughs> and then uh, when the guy came with the pizza, we were like, can you please deliver it here? Because we were obviously having, having a nice time there. Yeah. But that's how Agnes works, though. Like, we were now in Switzerland and we were in the pool. And she made the server come down to the pool again. So I'm. Did that like, pizza end I, up? Did that pizza end up in the uh, pool? The, it was drinks this time. Yeah, that was only drinks. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a day off. We were celebrating and had a good day. So, but uh, so Agnes just gets uh, her way. So it's oh, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. A way of making my my will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we, uh, you've been very outspoken about the three potential rule changes yes. with the WCF lately. I, I want to ask you each one individually and your thoughts on it. I think it's really important that the top players in the game voice their opinion Yes. in everything to do with our sport. Uh, no tick zone, Anna first, but I want to hear both yeah. thoughts. Yeah, sure. So the no tick zone, our team is not against in uh, per se. Like we are just thinking this for the first of all, we don't think you try three new rules at the World Championship. That is a lack of respect to the players and everyone involved. It's not a lesser championship just because it's after the Olympics. So uh, we would love to test out uh, those kind of rules, but not at the World Championships. So, but the no-tick zone, uh, I think it's in interesting. Um, I think we should try more things to it. Uh, maybe, for example, like uh, create a smaller area. I think it's a uh, a too big of a reward 
uh, like just anywhere on the center line anywhere too, on right. the center line so you can be off in like meters uh, and still not be able to touch it so we were just uh, throwing it out there maybe have like uh, a bu- like a big pin on the center line and a big pen- pin like uh, a little bit higher up so you get two positions uh, like two perfect positions but you got to touch them uh, or maybe making it even more interesting, make uh, an area where you can fit two rocks in. And let's see, should we play two rocks in that very tight area? Or should we play one rock there and then put one rock up in the, like where you could take it? So I think there's so many things that you could try out. Um, and uh, I'm not like against the no tick zone, like just straight no. I just think it's rushed to just try it at the World Championship and the big reward of just be able to put it on the center line. I, should, I think it should be a little bit tougher because that's how good our leads are. Do you have anything to add to that? That was really good. Yeah, it's a good answer. Like we, we have obviously been talking a lot about this uh, and we have been like discussing different options to, to add to it Like because we're, we're not negative. Like we, it's hard. It's, you, could, you could just say like no to changes, but we are we're like we don't want to we're not no sayers like we we love trying new things as well uh it's just like it's the timing we want to give every every new rule like um a really like a good time to to develop and and be better uh and we think that there's there's more to it and like anna said uh, trying it at the world championship is we feel is a lack of respect because because that is an important uh, competition for us uh, that is one of our biggest goals this season as well. Yeah, and confusing for the fans who just watched the Olympics a couple of weeks ago, and then all of a sudden, the teams are playing different. Being, so, okay. doesn't make sense. Agnes, four minute in, or I shouldn't say four minute in, that's not true. Four minutes for the first half, four minute and 15 seconds for the second half. Uh, your thoughts on, on that? Because that, that's quite a, a, a big change. Um, cause even way back in the old days, uh, when I played uh, at the start, it was like 73 minutes or 75 minutes. Um, and it wasn't thinking time. It was just running time. And then they switched to thinking time, but the whole game and now thinking time per end. Yeah. So this is a rule that we don't like at all. Like <laughs> not at all. <laughs> we don't even want to find a twist to it. Uh, we think that this will like, um, that we, this will change the pace of the game in the way that teams might not like they might play even simpler to be able to like uh, to keep the time for the the last couple of rocks and would which would make the game more boring for the spectators um and also like um i don't know like you can you can fill me in we yeah uh, i think that uh for this rule i think it's um i think one of the things in curling is to be able to run the game really really fast when you want to when you're just uh, and take time when you want to and that is a part of uh, being a good team and I think that communication is one of the big thing in our sport communication and how we talk to each other and for what we hear for fans uh, that is what they love to watch Uh, and I feel four minutes per end is being rushed uh, and Still, it's more time in total. <laughs> it's uh, so we we have less than forty minutes now, and uh, so they wanted to give us more time, but get, uh, ha- have it more rushed. So it doesn't make sense in my ears at all. Uh, and I think uh, we will see misses uh, coming out from lack of uh, hurrying. L- hurrying, yeah. Sure, sure. And then there's another big factor that no one has even like said, and that is like. At the World Championships, we have volunteers that are doing the time, timer, timing. And uh, it, it's very common that sometimes it happens that you lose 10 seconds here and there because uh, the timers, there was something confusing, something doing wrong, and they're new at their job and stuff like that. But the thing is, when you have a time in total, you have time to correct that because you have the coach says, hey, uh, you lost 10 seconds there. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. The time says, yes, I know. Uh, I will uh, I will make sure the clock doesn't run and then I will add. But now you lose 10 seconds. You're, you could be, that could be the game <laughs> right. because you could lose 10 seconds. The coach will start to, like, where 
where will we have that room for error? Uh, and then if you have four minutes and all of a sudden uh, me who's throwing last uh, loses 15 seconds because there was some timing difference. There will be so many signs go up like uh, time clocks. Oh no, you, oh, you kicked out for this. Oh no, that's hurry. Like it's um, like it's, I think there will be so many more. It's you put in one more risk uh, into the game that the players can't control and that will n not be good for players and not be good for TV. And also just like uh, the players love seeing a skip make a great shot to close an end. Like that is like you want to see what happens with the end so you want to watch the, the skip's great shot. Uh, and if it if it's going to be rushed every end uh, to to like get a good communication and to talk about how you want to throw the rock and everything and uh, then you might miss so it's going to be create more misses and uh, the crowd loves to see great shots being made <laughs> well said uh no extra ends but also but there's more to it than no extra ends because there's actually instead of a win loss two choices there'll be four choices uh three two points for a, a draw win one point for a draw loss and then zero of course if you your straight loss um, so not just no extra ends, but also a different complete point system that I don't think curling's ever had before. Um, Anna? No. Well, I'm laughing because I think uh, when you're just saying it, you hear how stupid it is. <laughs> Sorry, but yes. And so um, in curling, uh, we play to win. Uh, and... Uh, I think that it changes so many aspects of the game. It feels like for me and the team, we have said this in a letter to, in a, to the Athlete Commission, so there's, uh, we are uh, open with our opinions here. And I f we feel that this is such a big impact of our sport uh, because it will change the way you skip the game, like big time. Because coming home being too up, uh, it's not a good position to be in anymore. And if you play the whole game, to come uh, come to the last end, being two up, that is a great position to be in. Like, even though with a five rock rule, you can control the end and only lose a two. And then you have hammer in the extra end, good to go. That's perfect. Like, you played a great end, like, played a great game, and you have controlled ends coming home with a lead. But now, you can't play it that way. Uh, because uh, being two up is... Uh, you risk of losing the uh, like losing the game or get less points just because you came home with hammer uh, without hammer. So uh, with that said, uh, I think you um, create you will create an even bigger situation where you have even an odd ends play. So you will see teams playing super hard to blank uh, the odd ends and go pretty hard in the. In the even ends. So uh, creating that kind of thing when they want to see more aggressive curling, they, you're probably creating the opposite because you will see odd and odd even ends play all the time. So I think it's dangerous for our game, and I think um, I, I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to fit into a, a window of uh, TV, but I think uh, I think we should. I think we should be proud of our sport and know that the fans love the game. We love the game. So if we play the game we love, fans will come to us. Uh, so I think we just uh, just own up and say TV will TV will have us. Look at the Grand Slam. Look at the Sportsnet. You have had great ratings uh, for your game. And uh, yes, uh, and I also think that the hammer in the first end uh, will be even more important, uh, which makes. That something a big part it's already important, but some uh, but the, like a big part of the game will be uh, concluded before the camera turns on. Uh, the draw to the button to yes, start. Yes, exactly. Yes, and uh, uh, and then you have this heated battle where like you throw eight great rocks, everyone is sweeping, everything is like uh, one is screaming for the line, like this heated moment, and then, huh. Now we're drawing for the game like an open house. Like uh, the skip, the vice skip will just stand there. There's no line call. It's um, I don't know. I think that you lose you lose that heat and passion and uh, and curling and sports is about winning uh, for players and uh, 
Yeah. And well. like and and in addition <laughs> to that, like if you're in an in a pretty like in a good position, uh, then you're probably being the the team that are hitting a little bit more, like uh, being a little bit more defensive. And all and then all of a sudden, if the uh, the team coming from from under, if they're like scoring and it and it goes to a draw to the button to to decide the game, then for being the team in a good position, you're not since you haven't played as many draws as they have. So that is also something to to yeah. take with us here. And one last thing is too. <laughs> one, uh, We have many opinions about this, <laughs> but one uh, one thing like. Um, Like on the women's side, it's very close. Uh, like any any team in the world can beat anyone at the World Championships. Uh, but there's still some top teams that should beat some uh, lesser teams. But now, when the like teams that maybe are like uh, a little bit closer to bottom, they could go. They can really aim for a tie. So the round robins could be much messier. And then again, the LSD will uh, create an even bigger impact again. So then you can have uh, rankings going to the Olympics decided on LSD. And it's already, it and already, it is. already is. And it's, and it's going to be even more. Even more. Yeah. yeah. Let's get to a happier <laughs> topic. Let's get to a happier topic. <laughs> Good. But I mean, it's a little bit upset. So. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we're constructive, right? You, you are, and yes, and, uh, and heartfelt. Um, so I, I want to ask you about Wayne Mada. I want uh, and the role of not just Wayne, but the role of a coach in today's modern curling. I get that a lot from young people. Agnes, the the job of the coach on your team. So Wayne, we brought him in because we wanted to to get better at everything, and he has a lot of experience. Uh, and we we really want to get better at the strategics and like uh, turn the screws a little bit. Uh, and we think that he has a very good way of doing that and like not not telling us what to do, but like. Um, doing it together with us and creating good discussions. And we actually didn't know when we uh, when we first uh, got in contact with him. We just like signed up for one competition, and we didn't know how it would be. So it was, was just a tryout. Like we didn't even talk about doing anything for the future. Uh, but we felt that it was a perfect match uh, because we really thought he brought really great stuff to the team. Um, and he's not only talking about the strategics, he's like looking at other teams, looking at the men's teams. Uh, we're talking about the sweeping and trying trying new things. He's, um, he's a great like objective perspective for us. Well, thank you very much, you guys. That was awesome. Thank you for taking your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for letting us uh, speak about the rules. Well, you weren't really clear. <laughs> <laughs> Should we take it again? <laughs>